What's going on, guys? I know it's been a little under two weeks since I actually, like, last got some stuff out there, but I always have plenty of excuses, and actually I have some content and some good news for you. Tons of food for thought and an update to what's been going on as usual. Um, I actually let a friend of mine borrow my Xbox. Uh, I was trying to, I was trying to, it was an attempt to take some of the distractions that I have away from myself, and then, of course, a different friend of mine loads me up with a ton of emulators, and I begin to fiddle around with, like, some really old, nostalgic childhood games. <coughs> Pokemon! <coughs> But uh, hey, uh, despite some of the gaming I've been doing, I actually have some news regarding C++, what I've been up to, and some really other cool stuff. So uh, keep your eyes open and your ears open. <laughs> uh, you know, but in the deep blue C++, uh, as you guys know, I've been trying to go through and refresh some of my skills in C and C++ with the wonderful help of a really, really awesome YouTube teacher, the C++ guy. And at this point, I'm at the object-oriented programming, the, that portion of the lesson, but every now and again, I'll try and plow through some more videos and some of those tutorials, because I really, really want to learn more about C++ and being able to use that language more often than Python. But uh, I'm actually trying to make some of my own things in C++, so just so I sort of, like, submerge myself in the language language, and I get more acquainted with it on my own. I actually, I, I sort of tried to recreate the English vocabulary script that I've been working on in Python, that I'm sure you've heard me talking about it tons of times, and I actually still haven't got that finished. But yeah, I'm trying to rewrite it in C++. The structure and, like, the data implementation is not a problem, because vectors are just so awesome and I can store anything I want, just like a Python list, but some of the other quirks and techniques may not be so easy, like grabbing the definition off the online dictionary, like, case in point right there. That's going to be wicked tough. I had done this in Python with the URL lib module, just grabbing, like, the source of the URL we needed it, and I processed the HTML with, like, with, like regular expressions and the RE module and yada, yada, yada. But that in itself is really hectic, so I'm sure doing it in C++ would be wicked hard. Either way, though, it would definitely introduce me to some of the libraries and some more functions of the language. So I wanted to try that. I feel like that'd be awesome. But the most viable candidate I had found for grabbing the code off the internet in C... The one that I found so far was the lib curl library. Now, I've only been a little bit acquainted with curl due to, like, the font command line tool that I see so often, and I usually see it, like, versus wget, or, like, up against it. They're all, they seem to be, like, really similar, and some people prefer one one other than the other. But from what I've heard, or at least what I'm under the impression of, curl is much more powerful and more versatile than wget, but you know, I could be wrong. Uh, I just tend to use wget for some online processing or downloading things really quickly and really easily, but I feel like curl can, like, send data to forums and stuff, so I feel like curl is awesome, but I don't know as much about it as I would like to. Concerning libcurl, though, I had actually, I eventually set up the compiler and the linker to find the current header file, and I was able to play, I was able to toy with the module for a little bit. I eventually found some code examples on the official website that did what I wanted to, you know, like grabbing the raw HTML out of the URL, but the thing is it stored the output into a file. And I suppose storing the output into a file isn't like a bad idea for some cases, but in my scenario, where I want to look through the code and process it, having it be inside a string variable would be much nicer, it'd be a lot easier to work with. The function they were using, though, doesn't seem to support that, though, and unless, I mean, unless I mess around with it and try and write things on my own, I would just end up using the terrible alternative, like having to have to read into a temporary file and just immediately read right out of it, and that's just weird, that's, ugh, I don't want to do that. But, you know, that's nothing. I, I never actually did too much with that code, other than mess around with it and see what it can do. But I tried to piece together some of the libcurl syntax, and that was a fun little adventure. I was learning a little bit more about libraries and being able to link things and compile things together, and that was cool. And now at least I know a possible protocol to get data off the internet if I ever do any more with it. It held my attention for a day at least, and <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> But how about the Nokia N900? Look at that. I actually finally started to do some slick things with that cool little device, that blessed little phone and computer that I carry around with me every day. So uh, let me explain my little project here. I'm the kind of guy that would occasionally save some text messages that, like, maybe I just really like or I want to know existed at one point. So for years, I actually went through the trouble of manually typing in some of the messages that I wanted to save. They're, of course, all in specific, like, plain text files with a certain format. It's actually in one plain text file, but I developed that myself, so someday I'll be able to process all these messages if I ever wanted to. But, you know, they're saved nonetheless. They're inside a file. So, the thing is, it got to be really, really irritating having to have to write out each text message that I wanted to save. Because I have the date, you have who it's from, where it was sent, when it was sent, yada, yada, yada. 
And I don't think I even have to tell you that the Nokia has the potential to fix this problem, and that is awesome. So check it out. The Nokia stores text messages and other events like phone calls inside of a SQLite database that we can probe for information. It stores all the things in the user's home directory, and um, I'm thinking, uh, yeah, home user, and I think is the file name is .rtcom dash event logger like slash l hyphen v1 database <laughs> i mean if i can remember that correctly off the top of my head i don't even know but obviously it stores a number it came from the date that's actually in a unix timestamp that's kind of cool where the message was coming from whether it was incoming or outgoing that's a boolean variable that's pretty awesome and of course it stores the raw message what we need the, the most valuable piece so we can get all that information and more just by using the command line tool sqlite 3 and snagging some of that information and that's awesome that's that's wicked awesome i'm able to use that to process it so what i've done so far is i've been trying to write a python script that uses the subprocess module and what that does is it lets me use like a, a command line it lets me use a command line command and we're running sqlite 3 and we pass the the file name as an argument and then we pass the things that we want to select the fields so we store that output into a variable inside the python script from there it's just a matter of splitting those things up into a list and processing what we need to the Unix timestamp looked to be a little bit of a problem, though. That that was going to be tough for a bit. But after some research, it looks like Python's time module has a function called a uh, called GM time, and that'll convert it into what we need. I love it. I mean, Python has a function for like everything. It, it's so convenient. <laughs> but you know, sorting out all, all this information is only the beginning. The plan is to build an interface with like with GTK. Obviously, we would we would choose what person we want to see text messages from. Maybe we could give me or the user an option to choose between what time period the text messages were from. Or maybe we could just see all the text messages from everyone at once, all at the same time. That'd be really slow, but I mean, it should still be an option, shouldn't it? The display and the design ideas are kind of endless, though. I really don't know how I want to approach this. I'm kind of scared, to be honest. <laughs> For a while, I planned on recreating the entire, like, conversations application on the Nokia, though, and, like, making it one that I like and does what I want it to do. One that doesn't bug out when you use emoticons, or one that doesn't, like, create two or, two or more separate windows, yada yada yada. But I freaking love the customability on the Nokia. It, I can do anything I want as long as I know how to do it, and that's awesome. It's, it's a Linux phone, it's open source, and that gives, like, that gets two thumbs up from me. Two big thumbs up. <laughs> But I've been working with the interface and the display for the little conversations remake in GTK a few weeks back, though, and that kind of kept me interested. GTK is really fun to manipulate because you can kind of, like, think through their sort of boxes design. So if some of you don't know much of GTK or, like, that box layout, the programmer is kind of given two options. You could use horizontal boxes or you could use vertical boxes. And these boxes kind of act as, like, containers where you can put as many elements or other instances as you would like to, like buttons, entry boxes, lists, labels, and more. Now, imagine the idea of storing a box inside of another box and so on and so forth. My current design for the application had a vertical box as a root element. The top of the box was filled with a scrollable section for the messages, while stuck at the bottom was another horizontal box. The horizontal box right there had two more horizontal boxes inside of it, along with the vertical box to the right side. With this logic structure, the text inside the buttons that would be stored in the lowermost vertical box, the one beside the two horizontal boxes at the bottom, those text boxes, like those little buttons, they wouldn't be fixed sizes, they would be like flush against the side that we need. Because uh, we have the two entry boxes on there, we would type in like who we're sending the text message to in the actual message. So we have the two buttons, contacts and send, so we can look for the contact that we're sending it to, and we can actually send the message. And I'm sure this is incredibly hard to visualize, though, and <laughs> it may be damn near impossible, but you know, there's no easy way to like explain the back-end work of a display. But even then, looking back, I may not even use this idea, though. Like, recreating the text messaging application with Dbus and all this jazz, it may not be so much of a good idea for the tiny little job that I'm trying to accomplish here. For the moment, all I really need is an interface where I can pick and choose what text messages I've received, and which I'll be able to save in the plain text file that I speak of. This could all be done with, like, a ton of labels and text box and uh, uh, checkboxes, though, with, like, a little text box or an entry box that allows me to type in the person's text message that I want to be looking at. So if I wanted to look at someone, uh, I don't know, Bill Smith, I don't even know anyone named Bill Smith, that's just a random name, but if I typed in, if I typed that in, all the text messages from Bill Smith, I'd be able to see, and I could just check which ones that I want. That'd be awesome, right? <laughs> Each message that's checked is going to be stored in the save file, and the ones that aren't, obviously aren't going to be saved in the text file. Te uh, the text file, I'm sorry. But there may still be a case where I or the user doesn't check things off in the correct order. 
What if the chronological order of the text messages is thrown off by the way we save things? At that point, we'd have to sort through the file itself, which is a whole other task. Obviously, I don't think I even have to tell you, this is still a work in progress. I really don't know how I want to approach this, where I'm gonna, where it's going to go, but the idea is still there. It definitely, it's definitely given me a lot to think about, and even some ideas to share with you guys and the rest of the world. So, I mean, what's the best way to design something, though, both on the front end and on the back end? You know, I don't know. <laughs>